Hello and welcome back. If this is your first time here, I am Dr. Stock, Doctor of Education. And in this video, we're going to take just a really quick, super brief look back at the Dow, the NASDAQ, the S&P, and we're going to see how they did throughout the past five trading days. And then we're quickly going to move on to economic reports for next week and talk about what they mean going forward for us, especially where the Fed rate decision is concerned. And then we're going to move on from that over to the earnings that I think are important for next week, including just a few of the ones that are volatility plays that I talked about in my previous video. All that I want to do in under 10 minutes. So we better get right to it. Before we get to it, I got to tell you, Frog walks into a bank, says to the bank teller Patty Smack, I'd like to take out a loan. Patty Smack says, well, what do you have as collateral? Frog holds up his little frog paw. She looks at it and goes, I don't know if that'll work. Let me go get my manager. Patty Smack goes, gets the bank manager. Bank manager comes out and says, let me see what you have as collateral. Frog shows him. Bank manager says to bank teller Patty Smack, that's a knickknack, Patty Smack. Give the frog a loan. All right, we better fire right into it. In this video, we'll be featuring the Moomoo app. And later on, I will tell you how to get up to 16 free stocks using my link that's down in the description. But for now, I want to get over to the economic calendar. So this is on trading economics. I have no stake in it. I just like the way that it's laid out. It works out well in my videos. So for trading economics, we have Monday, July the 31st, Chicago PMI, Dallas Fed Manufacturing Index. We know that we've seen a lot of contraction in manufacturing. So if that continues, not quite a big deal so far. It's it's sort of expected to continue for a little bit yet. However, the next day, Tuesday, August the 1st, at 10 a.m., we have ISM manufacturing. So we'll see what that has to say about manufacturing. And then we have Jolt's. This is the big one that we look at Jolt's job openings, Jolt's job quick. That is really going to be impactful for the markets. So the manufacturing stuff, it is important. I think right now, given how many times Jerome Powell has mentioned the jobs report and wanting to see softening, expecting, well, he said he, that they expect to see it because that's what happened in the past is that there's been a softening in the labor market. I do think not only do they want to expect that they expect to see it, but I think that they actually want to see it. I think that they want that as another sign that, that inflation is on its way out. I think that's just part that they want to pin down as necessary, even if they don't say it's necessary. And I think that they're just playing around with words at that point in time. So uh, we'll see if we get that sort of softening coming from, coming out of the jolts, the tighter that number gets. So right now you can see the previous numbers that we've had. The more job openings we have, the better it would be for the Fed in order for them to cut rates sooner. The lower that number is, the better it is for people who need those jobs. So there is a bit of a dichotomy there. Just be aware of it. So let's move on from there. And then we get into Wednesday and we get ADP employment change. So we start to talk about private employment. That's also going to be important to us. Last month, that came out at almost 500,000, which was about twice what was expected, I believe. And you can see the consensus and the trading economics estimate that they have here. These are less than half of what last month's was. So we'll be watching those. And that is on Wednesday, August the 2nd. So let's move on to Thursday. Thursday, we get non-farm payroll information. We get challenger job cuts, unit labor costs. Uh, unit labor costs is going to be good for uh, telling more about inflation, just so you know, and then initial jobless claims. I talked about this in my live stream with Stockmo. We want to see that number and when I say want to, I don't mean people losing their jobs. I'm talking about the Fed. I'm talking about the stock market and I'm talking about rate pauses or rate cuts. In that narrow view of things, we want to see that number go up over 300,000. As far as we go on a personal level, we want as many people to be as employed as possible so they don't face economic hardships. Just so that's clear as I go through and talk about this. So then we have continuing jobless claims, which is related to those factory orders. We also want to hear from that. That is something that uh, came out pretty well last month. And you can see it's supposed to come out even better, uh, at least as far as consensus goes. Let's move on from there to Friday, August the 4th. And then we get non-farm payrolls. And we also get the unemployment rate uh, and the uh, participation rate. And then also average hourly earnings month over month and year over year. We want to hear those numbers as well as once again, it goes back to inflation and anything inflation related is what we want to hear about. And really, at this point in time, with the market up as high as it is, we want to say, OK, well, what is that thing that keeps on pushing us higher? And I think at least one of those things, besides further indication that inflation is on its way out and that the 
Federal Reserve is closer and closer to cutting its rates down from the restrictive level that it says that it says that it's at. Because right now it's saying that we are at a restrictive level of monetary policy and that it is putting downward pressure on economic activity. That as that rate comes down, that that pressure should be lifted and then that should allow the economy to thrive a little bit better instead of choking it off uh, as they're trying to affect the demand side uh, to in order to bring down inflation, uh, as has been mentioned a, a whole bunch of times. So that's what we have looking throughout the next week. And I think this is a good time to transition over to Moomoo. And like I said, using my link that's down in the description, you can get up to 16 free stocks. You can see the deposit levels here, 100, 1,000 and 5,000. Make that deposit, get your free stocks. You can see how much five up to 15 free stocks. If you do the $5,000 deposit level, not only do you get the 15 free stocks, the free share of Tesla or XPE and just a wonderful opportunity, wonderful app. I'm not only going to show the desktop version of it in this video, but I'm also going to share with you the mobile version because I want you to see the earnings calendar. I really think that that's going to help us out. Let's move over to this. This is Moomoo as the desktop version. Right now we're looking at DIA, which tracks the Dow and you can see that we've been sort of sideways. We actually finished a little over about two thirds of a percent up from where we started. So not so bad at all. And you can see the sort of run that the Dow has been on and we wrapped up. It was either record setting or we tied the record set of 13 straight days up. It was it, that was that was quite a run that we had going there. And then yesterday I had to go and spoil it. So uh, that's the Dow not doing too bad in this past week. And then let's move on from there. We'll go to the SPY, which tracks the S&P 500. Oops, klutzing me. Just knocked my phone down. Got it. All right. So the S&P, we're looking at the SPY right here. And well, quite a time we've had. Once again, we're starting to round off a little bit here and it is, it really is okay. I mentioned this in yesterday's video. It really is okay if we see some softness coming into the markets, taking a little bit of time to correct, especially if we want to continue our way upward. And I like to think of those times if we are continuing on a bull run, I like to think of those times where we have those pullbacks as a time for buying opportunities or dollar cost averaging opportunities depending on what you're looking at. So I know the dollar cost averaging is buying, but buying opportunities doesn't necessarily mean that you're dollar cost averaging. So semantics, let's move on. Let's go on to QQQ, which tracks the NASDAQ 100. There we go. And you can see wonderful run that we've been on. A Little bit of a sell off. So maybe you can talk about that as having corrected a little bit already. And I'm not talking about it in the form of it necessarily correction, just a little bit of softness. And like I said, if we did see any of these indices sell off a little bit, that's okay. You want to see it from time to time so that way you don't get the big, very like boom, 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 heart palpitation crashes because that that doesn't feel nice at all to anybody. All right. So it's been a good time in the markets. I would move over from there to Amazon. AMZN is the ticker symbol for Amazon. And for Amazon, I think that we could see a 5% move in either direction following their earnings from where they sit right now. And they are lining up. And we'll see because their earnings don't take place until August 3rd third, which is Thursday in the after hours. And we will double check that on the app. As in my last video, I said SoFi's date wrong. SoFi's earnings date is July 31st before market opens. And I, that really doesn't sit well with me that I gave out the wrong information with that one. So I want to make sure that I get this right. We'll go to the calendar and we'll show you guys right on the app through the Moomoo app uh, where you can find that. So 5% any of the direction for Amazon. And we're really looking for good news, not only that people are still continuing, that consumers are continuing to purchase heavily from Amazon, but Amazon Web Services is sort of the sticking point. That's what got us during the last earnings uh, that made things not go so well for us. We can actually see that back here, uh, that Amazon Web Services were soft. So I do expect a beat on earnings per share. Revenue, I think, is going to be pretty darn good for Amazon. Amazon Web Services is the part that we really want to see because they can go ahead and slim down staff all day long they can lay people off but until we really see that growth in web services again it's going to be difficult to have that that huge increase going for amazon unless they have other revenue and other earnings from other sources that really makes up for the fact that amazon web services isn't showing the amount of growth or that it's declining actually from what we saw during previous earnings sessions so from there i want to switch over to apple so for Apple, it's iPhone sales and they dropped the new model right at the end of Q3, right at the beginning of Q4. So we want to hear that guidance. What does that mean for Apple? 
for their iPhone sales. Like I said, that's the biggest thing. And then I think that's like over 50%. I think 20% of that is uh, Apple services. So we want to hear a lot of that, like the over 70% coming from between their services that they have to offer and their iPhone sales. And that guidance is going to be huge. So for Apple, I don't think we get as big a move as we would have for some other companies. Uh, there is a lot of institutional investment in this, and they're just a behemoth of a company. I think instead of the 5% or 10%, like I said, for some other companies, I think for Apple, I think we get a 3% move in either direction. And because we are so darn close to that 200 mark, I think that we can peekaboo over that, maybe hit like 201-ish. And if not, we drop down maybe just below the 190s, down to about like 189 or so. And that's from today's closing price. Even if we do move off of that, it's still possible that we see 3% in either direction unless we get a run up over 200 prior to earnings, in which case then I think we'd have a sell off. But we're just going to have to watch and see how the market goes leading up to Thursday of next week to really shed some final light on that. All right, rapid fire for these other ones. So Etsy. Etsy, I mentioned one of my previous videos. Why am I mentioning it now? Let me get some of this stuff off the screen because we don't need that for this part of it. So for Etsy, I said that this was a volatility play. I expect Etsy, which has its earnings in the after hours, which could honestly, it could influence a little bit of what we see for Amazon. It actually, it'd be the other way around that Amazon might be the bigger influence on Etsy. Etsy they are sort of our competitors a little bit in online sales. Uh, in any case, about 10% in either direction. And then Moving on from there, Generac, G-N-R-C, something that's not very well talked about or anything, had its golden cross moment, forming an ascending triangle that we have right here, still bullish on the RSI, has its earnings coming out during the market on the, August the 2nd, uh, which is Wednesday at 10 a.m. I'm going for 10% in either direction. So another volatility play there, mentioned my other video, and I really wanted to get to this, which is SoFi, because I said, I. I, I said August the 1st for some reason. A couple of videos ago, when I talked about SoFi uh, two times ago, I, ta I talked about it as having its earnings on July the 31st before the market opens, which is a Monday. So any options plays would have to take place on Friday before the market closes. And then when I made my video on SoFi today, for whatever reason, I said August the 1st, and I'm like, hey, so you'd have Monday beforehand. And man, oh man, like, if I'm trying to be informative, I better give you good information. And that was a time like it doesn't sit well with me that I said the wrong date there. So I did want to put out that correction. I already had that correction video out as about a two minute video. And I couldn't be more clear that I was putting out a, a correction that I gave the wrong SoFi earnings date. And I just hope that it was in time uh, that other people were able to take a look at that and then uh, count that in with any plans that they may have had. So I said that I would show you the Moo Moo mobile app in this video. So let me transition to that. There we go. So this is the landing screen that you have for Moomoo. And if you tap on the US tab at the top and then scroll down just a little bit, you'll see the earnings reports. And if you tap on that arrow, it shows you by day. There's the calendar and there's SoFi right in the middle of it on July 31st. And it tells you that it's in the pre-market that you hear those earnings. And then if you scroll down from there, there's AMD that I have checked. But what I talked about in this video, there's Etsy that is on Wednesday, August the 2nd. And if you, uh, Generac is also up on the screen and you can also hit show all, but there's about over 400 earnings that are reported that day. So it will show you some of the ones that they find more important. You can go through and find any company that you want to in there. And then on August the 3rd, which is Thursday, in the post market, we have Apple and we have Amazon. And you can listen to those live earnings calls through the mobile app and it comes out clear as day and it really is a wonderful way. And then you can also follow along with the comments or you can participate in the comments that are there or you can just ignore them all together. And I can tell you, at least as an iPhone user, that it does work. When you lock your phone, you can continue listening to those earnings calls as they go on. So I did want to share that with you. And like I said, I think there's a lot of value through the Moomoo app. It's not just a way that I support this channel, but it is also a way that you can support yourself. It can help elevate your trading game using that. I know that I do my tech technical analysis through the desktop app most usually, but you can also do it on your smartphone. You can do it on your tablet as well. Um, and then you can do your trading however you feel most comfortable doing that, but you also get those free stocks on top of it.
If you're interested in my exclusive content, you can find that down using the link in the description for Patreon. Click sign up. Not only do you get that exclusive content, but you also get access to my watch list of stocks, which is part of that exclusive content. But you can also be a member of my Discord community. You can go over there, talk with me and my other Discord members and really get that conversation going. We'd absolutely love to have you over there. So like I said, that link is down in the description. While you're looking down there, don't forget about that Moomoo link. Sign up, get your free stocks. Not only are you supporting yourself, but you're also supporting the work that I do here and making it easier for me all the time to come back and bring you the best information that I possibly can, providing as much value and service as I can here on YouTube. Thank you guys for watching this. I really do appreciate it. I am, I am Dr. Stock, Doctor of Education. Remember, my friends, learning is earning, and we'll see you in the next video.